You are watching the chapter number 5 of the Blender modeling course where today we will be making a leather couch or a sofa in Blender and along with that we will also be learning about some new and different modeling techniques, tools that will help you to take your Blender projects to the next level and if you have not yet watched the last 4 chapters of this Blender modeling course then you can watch them by clicking on the link of playlist that I have added in the description of this video. We have opened this new Blender file with the default layout and the first step that we will do is to add some reference images in order to create the model of the leather couch. So I searched on Google for some good reference images for leather couch and all these results came up. Out of these, I think that this one looks perfect and so I'll be downloading this image as the reference image. Also, I've dropped the link of this image in the description of this video so you too can download it by using that link. So we are back in the scene and to add the reference image in the blender file, we first need to add an image editor here. So I'll take my cursor over here and this double headed arrow will appear. Then right click and select horizontal split. After this, I'll take this pointer somewhere in the middle and and we we'll left click to divide this editor into two parts. Then click here and select the image editor. Now to import that image to be used as the reference image, click on the open button. Then this window will appear where you have to open that particular folder where you save the reference image. After this, select that image, click on the open button and now we have this reference image of the leather couch added over here. Now coming to the modeling part, the modeling of this leather couch will be a slight different as compared to the previous 4 3D models that we have made in this course. Till now, we use simple mesh shapes like cube, plane, cylinder and use them to create a variety of different things and that too without using any physics and simulation. But in Blender, you have the option to use physics and simulation and to access this, simply scroll down and over here, you have a properties editor named as the physics properties editor. In this, we have various types of physics simulations like fluid, soft body, rigid body, cloth, collision, etc. And by using this physics and simulation, we can create a lot of amazing things in Blender. For example, right now we are working on a leather couch and as a result, we will be using the cloth simulation in order to create the different parts of this leather couch. But before that, we need to modify the shape of this cube on which we will apply the cloth physics in order to make it ready to create one of these cushions for the bottom part. So to do this, let's first tab into the edit mode and with all the vertices selected, I will scale this down in the z-axis and left click to finalize. After this, we will scale it up in the x-axis and similarly, let's also scale it up slightly in the y-axis. Now while using any type of physics and simulation, it is suggested to have a high number of vertices in order to give it a realistic look. So to increase the number of vertices in this object, I'll press Ctrl plus R for the loop cut tool, then use the scroll wheel to increase the number of cuts to somewhere around 8 or 10, then left click to finalize and right click to cancel the movement. Similarly, let's also add some loop cuts on this part also. So press Ctrl plus R again, then use the scroll wheel to increase the number of loop cuts to around 8 or 10, then left click and right click to cancel the movement. Also, let's add one more loop cut over here. So press Ctrl plus R, then left click to finalize and right click to cancel the movement. Now return back to the object mode and with this cube selected, we'll be applying the cloth physics. So in the physics properties, click on the cloth physics and by doing this, you will have several options but for now, the one that we have to look for is the pressure. So I'll turn it on and in the pressure value, we'll increase this to something like 2 or 3, then scroll down and yes, by default, on applying the cloth physics to any object, it will begin to fall in the downward direction on playing the animation because of the gravity effect. But to prevent it from doing so, simply go to the field weights and in this menu, change the value of gravity to 0. And now if I go to the 3D viewport and press the space bar, then you can see that the cloth physics is working and our cube will change into a simple pillow like structure. And this is because of the cloth physics. See, this is the main point of this chapter that you should be understanding with complete focus. First of all, we used a cube object, then we increased its number of vertices because we needed to apply the cloth physics. Then in these settings, we enabled the pressure because we wanted our cube to convert into a pillow or a cushion like object. So by using the pressure, we were able to apply a uniform pressure to the object or the mesh. And on playing the animation, we saw a simple simulation of the cloth physics where our cube turned into a pillow-like structure. But to make the leather couch or a sofa, we need the shape of this object to be more like a cushion as compared to a pillow. And to achieve that result, we need to move the frames in the timeline editor. And in most of the cases, it is possible that somewhere around frame number 2, you will notice that your object will actually look like a cushion only if it had a better geometry. So I've set the pointer to the frame number 2 and with this, we'll now be applying the subdivision surface modifier to increase the number of vertices and to give it a real look. So go to the modifier properties, click on add modifier and in the generate, select the subdivision surface modifier. Then in the levels viewport, I'll set the value to 2 and with this, we are having a simple object which looks like a cushion. Now since we'll be creating the duplicates of this cushion to make the rest of the couch, we should first apply the cloth physics and the subdivision surface modifier. So click here and click on the apply button. Similarly, for this modifier also, click here and select apply. Now to create the rest of the couch, let's go to the top view by pressing 7 on the numpad, create a duplicate of this by pressing shift plus 
as P and we'll move it in the X axis. So let's place it over here, create one more duplicate and move it in the X axis over here. And with this, we are having the base of the couch completely ready. After this, let's work on creating this bottom part of the leather couch. So for this, I'll first select this cube in the middle. Let's also go to the front view and we'll create a duplicate of it and we'll move it down in the Z axis. Now press tab to enter the edit mode, press A to select all and let's slightly scale it down in the Z axis. Also, let's move it up slightly like this and let's return back to the edit mode and now we need to expand its area to cover the entire base. So for this, turn on the X-ray mode and we'll be selecting all these vertices over here. Then press G to move them in the X axis and let's place them here. Similarly, for this side also, I'll select all these vertices and we'll move them in the X axis like this and left click to finalize. Now return back to the object mode and let's also turn off the X-ray mode. With this, the bottom part is ready and even the three cushions placed on it are completely ready. Now to create the back part of the leather couch, we'll select all these three objects, create their duplicates by pressing shift plus B, then right click to cancel the movement and we'll rotate them in the X axis by 90 degrees. Now go to the side view, press G to move them and place them over here. Also, to reduce the scaling in the Y axis, press tab to enter the edit mode, press A to select all and let's scale them down in the Y axis like this and now they look perfect. After this, let's place them properly, let's also move them down in the Z axis like this and now let's also increase their scaling in the Z axis and left click to finalize. Now return back to the object mode again, go to the side view, press G to move them up in the Z axis like this and now they look perfect. After after this, let's also work on creating the side handles for the couch. So with this object selected, I'll create a duplicate, then right click to cancel the movement. Let's rotate it in the Y axis by 90 degrees and we'll place it on this side. To adjust it properly, press tab to enter the edit mode, press A to select all and we'll scale it down in the Z axis like this. And now let's also move it down in the Z axis. And with this, the handle on this side is almost ready. If you want, you can scale it down in the X axis like this, which will give it a slightly better look. After this, I'll go to the top view and with this object selected, I'll create a duplicate and move it in the x-axis and place it over here and finally we have completed the entire body of the leather couch if you feel like adjusting any of these objects you can do that by selecting that particular object and moving it or rotating it or scaling it up and down and once everything is ready we'll be creating the legs of the leather couch or the sofa so for this let's add a cylinder so press shift plus a then go to mesh and select a cylinder let's go to the front view press g to move it and place it over here press tab to enter the edit mode and with all the vertices selected we'll scale it down like this now return back Back to the object mode, press G to move it up and place it over here. Then go to the side view, let's also move it in the Y axis like this and to give it some detailing, go to the edit mode, adjust the scaling properly and after this, enable the X-ray mode, select the bottom vertices, press G to move them down in the Z axis and to add some detailing, I'll simply extrude the vertices downwards, press S to scale them up and extrude them again. With this, we are having a very basic structure of the couch legs ready for our scene. Now right click and apply shade auto smooth. After this, let's create a duplicate and we'll move it in the Y axis like this. Similarly, I'll select both of them will create the duplicates and will move them in the x-axis and with this we have created this 3d model of a leather couch or a sofa with the help of cloth physics now moving ahead i will select all of these cubes then right click and apply shade auto smooth now the next thing that we'll do is to add some detailing to these objects that we have added at the back of the couch and for this we'll be using a tool in the sculpt mode now to access the sculpt mode hold on ctrl plus tab and take the cursor to the sculpt mode now this tool menu will change and since we'll be adding some detail to the cloth so we need to enable the cloth tool from this tool menu. So scroll down and over here we have this cloth menu whose icon is also in the shape of a cloth. So left click to select it and with this enabled if I try to left click and drag on the selected object then you will notice some slight detailing being added on the surface of the cloth. To see this in a better way I'll zoom in and will continuously left click and drag the cursor away or else you can go to the strength value here and increase this to 1 and now if I left click and drag the cursor then the effect will be seen in a much better way. You can use this tool in the sculpt mode in order to create some detailing for any cloth object. Similarly, let's also do the same for the other objects. So we'll return back to the object mode by holding Ctrl plus tab and taking the cursor to the object mode. Then select the other one, go to the sculpt mode again and with the cloth tool enabled, I left click and drag the cursor like this. So it totally depends upon you that how much detailing you want to add to the object and you can even control the strength of the tool and its radius. Similarly, let's do the same thing for this one also. So I'll select it, hold on Ctrl plus tab to go to the sculpt mode and now we'll add some detailing to it. And after all this is done, we'll return back to the object mode and now we'll work on applying a very basic material to all these objects. So go to the rendered view and to get some lighting, click here and turn off the scene lights and the scene world. Now with this object selected, go to the material properties and by default, this material is added over here. So in the base color, I'll change this to something like yellow or maybe brown color. But if you want, you can set any other color of your choice for this leather couch or the sofa. Then the next thing that we'll do is to create a metallic material for the couch legs. So I'll select this one, go to the material properties, click on the new button and in the base color, I'll reduce the brightness to make it look like the black 
compact metal. Then in the metallic nature, I'll increase the value to 0.7 or 0.8 and in the roughness, we'll reduce this value to 0.2. Now let's apply the same material to all the other legs. So click on this icon and select that specific material. Similarly, let's do the same for this one also and at last, we'll repeat the same procedure for this one. Now to complete the scene, for the final render, we'll be adding a plane for the base. So press Shift plus A, then go to Mesh and select the plane. Let's move it down in the Z axis like this and left click to finalize. Now press Tab to enter the edit mode. Let's scale it up 20 times and after this, let's change the angle and let's also apply a basic material to this plane. So go to the material properties, click on the new button and in the base color, we'll change this to dark blue. Now let's also change the render engine from EV to cycles. So go to the render properties, then in the render engine, select the cycles. And finally, this is how our scene is looking in the cycles render engine. Now to work on the lighting, click here and turn on the scene lights and the scene world. After this, let's go to the object mode. Now press 7 on the numpad to go to the top view and to create the lighting system, I'll select this light, then I will move it and place it on the front side. Press Shift plus D to create a duplicate, move it in the X axis and place it over here. Let's create one more duplicate and place it over here. And then in the end, I'll select all these three lights and we'll create their duplicates and we'll move them in the Y axis. These lights will be used for lighting up the back part of the couch. Now let's switch back to the rendered view. Press 0 on the numpad to go to the camera view. And finally, this is how our scene is looking. A few things that we can work on is to add some lighting for this bottom part. So for this, we'll be selecting the three lights present on the front side. So with the shift key hold it, select the three lights. Then we'll create the duplicates by pressing shift plus D and we'll move them down in the Z axis. Also, let's move them slightly away in the Y axis like this. And now let's get back to the rendered view. And with this, the simple scene of the leather couch with some lighting is completely ready. If you want, you can make some changes by adjusting the lighting in order to give the render a much more natural look. Also, let's change the camera angle. So click on this icon to enable the lock camera to view. And now we'll change the camera view as per the best angle. Now to render the image, click on the render button and select render image. And then this window will open where we have this image of the leather couch being rendered. For now, I'll close this window. And with this, we have now arrived to the end of this chapter. Today, we learned about the usage of cloth physics in order to create pillows and cushions. And by using that knowledge, we also created the 3D model of a leather couch. Then we gave it a simple material and even worked on the basic lighting setup. And yes, if you manage to create this 3D model of the leather couch or the sofa, then don't forget to share the final results on the discord server whose link is added in the description of this video. Also, if you wish to download this particular 3D model that I have created in this Blender project, then you can join the Patreon whose link is available in the description. And yes, our next chapter will be the chapter number 6 where we'll be creating the 3D model of a treasure chest. And not just that, we'll also be creating an animation where we'll have some gold coins falling into that treasure chest. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel, press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.